How are you, the lads? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new show, to a new fans forum, the show where you can come on and have your say. Uh, whatever we're talking about, you got five minutes to come on, have your say, uh, say your piece. And of course, you can always uh, start a debate, start a discussion. Um, I'm here myself somewhere, and I'm sure it's the mighty win. Or may, oh, no, I think I believe it's Jamie because we usually have this. There we go. But I'm, I'm going to try to do something there. OK, so, uh, we, of course, we got Jamie from the MAG co-hosting with me. Paul, obviously, the NUFC insider. They might win. We might be getting DM uh, Dom uh, on the uh, on the show to co-host. Of course, there we go. Dom is right there. The man of the hour. Too sweet to be sour. Uh, Dom, uh, we already got uh, a fan waiting in the background. So, you know, we, we shall get uh, rid of this introduction quickly, uh, rather quickly, at least. But as you know, smash the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the show super chats are much appreciated click the dollar sign at the bottom right over your screen and of course thank you for your support uh if you want to become a member you can do so win prices as well as enjoy exclusive content and uh, yeah hit the join button around the subscribe button or if you're on ios join via link the link is also in the top part of your uh, of the chat uh you can join our facebook fan forum interact with us you can also join our whatsapp fan forum Either way, you can join both or just one of them, whichever uh, works, whichever works best for you. Uh, if you have any questions right now, you can uh, you can join and of course, uh, you know, start a start a topic of discussion. Uh, I got my other co-host, uh, Black and White Banter, Matt. What's up, hey. man, my friend? All yeah, right, Jen, how's co it going? Doing great, doing great. We got a lot of uh, co-hosts tonight with the fans forum. We try to. Uh, you know, keep it that way. And, of course, fans can come on, have their say for about five minutes or so. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, and you can join the show. The link is pinned in the chat. You don't need a camera. As long as we can hear you, that's good enough uh, for you to come on and have your say. Um, I guess a good uh, topic of discussion to start would be um, trying to, you know, gloss over the, the, the international break. Some of the players that, of, of obviously, Newcastle United related that have been playing out there. Great game by Gordon. Great, uh, I, I believe he should be called again, called up again for the national team. I mean, you guys are all over. You guys are English, so I'm assuming uh, you would you would think the same. I watched the game, and uh, when he came on, certainly he was uh, on fire. But uh, what, what what is you what is you guys' perspective on this? Absolutely, He's very good. Yeah. yeah, played a good performance. Yeah. Energetic. Right. Seven out of ten. Yeah. I thought it was good. Yeah, totally should definitely get a call up. It'll, it'll be tough. Do you guys think that he will get one, though? What, what do you think, Matt? Welcome, by the way, on the show, brother, for the first time. So, glad to have you here. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. Um, yeah, I thought I thought as far as, uh, as far as the debut went, I thought he was quite good. I don't necessarily think he pulled up any trees like some people are making out, but I think as far as, a, as, as how nervous he would have been for his first, first call-up for England, I think he did pretty well. I think he probably offers us something that, only Jack Grealish, who doesn't really get anywhere near the England team really at the moment, offers in terms of how direct he is. And then Marcus Rashford, you could say, who's very, very hitty missy. Yeah. Right. Right. Seven yeah. I, I, yes, but, I mean, is, I, man. I think uh, I think he certainly should get a, you know a few callers. But as we know, Southgate uh, is a different lad uh, than most, and uh, he might not. Uh, really Calvin Phillips, that lad, I tell you. Oh, yeah, he's a big, strong man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The Mighty Ben is in the chat, by the way. That is the parody account uh, for the Mighty Win. Uh, and uh, yeah, I saw that comment. We shall not mention certain channels that are not uh, kind to us. But uh, and Tango Noise Jordan out there, even and all and all that. Uh, but first of all, Matt, actually, you know, I wanted to, to give your, you, you a shout out. Your channel, you've got a nice channel going. You posted a, a good uh, video today about the tactics of uh, Eddie Howe. And, uh, you know, it was a nice video. And, you know, tell us a little bit of what you do on your channel for the folks that, that may, maybe don't uh, don't know what you're about, man. Let, let us know. Yeah. Uh, just everything Newcastle uh, based, really. Um, match vlogs, home and away. Uh, all topics. At I don't necessarily like to do too many videos on just the news that gets leaked um, right. because obviously we can all go to our Twitter feeds for that to sort of like just find out things. But I'm, I'm lucky enough to have some access to sort of stats and stuff in in, mm. in in my day job. So I like to try and 
go a little bit deeper into things and yeah, just everything Newcastle related. It's 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 big part of my life, my football clubs, as it is for all of us. So yeah, just everything Newcastle. Yeah, what a proper proper channel, man. You, you know, just and you are one of the funniest YouTubers out there. So uh, you gotta you gotta uh, you like it. go find him on Facebook. Go find him on Facebook. Yeah. Go find him. I mean, I'm telling you, he'll make you laugh with certain really posts. Like the, um, uh, like the uh, Gordon and Bruno one that was really good. Oh, I've been, I've been, I've been dragged through the mud. I've been dragged through the mud from some quarters on Twitter with that one in the last twenty-four hours. So yeah, it's, it's, it's oh, nice, yeah. nice to hear positive things said. <laughs> Can't take a joke, man. It's, it's great. It's, it's, it's the, it is the Newcastle fans' nightmare when, like, you know, are they doing the Anthony Gordon Bruno? Uh, oh, <laughs> them. <laughs> it was, it was weird, wasn't it? It is weird yeah. watching two year old running, running at each other. It was really, really weird. <laughs> Yeah. Um, each other. Right. Uh, it, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I, another same match. Bruno played, I think, great. I mean, he was really yeah, he uh, yeah. a boss in that midfield for, for Brazil. Tough team. Uh, you know, many can say that the, the, the best oh, uh, comments, national sorry. team in, in the history of football. So, I mean, he's, he's doing great. Uh, Alexander Isak is well played for his national team. Emil Kraft uh, both play for Sweden. Uh, of course, you got Dubravka. Dubravka, <laughs> he got he he he's got a stat that's not uh, so he's not he shouldn't be proud of. Um, he got a goal conceded in just six seconds into the match, and wow. uh, that's like a record or something like that. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's a, I mean a bad record, but a record nonetheless. It's the Jeez. fastest goal in international football history uh, to Dubravka. You know, it, it, incredible. And you got Jamal Lewis as well that played. I think the the under twenty one lads played as well. Lewis Miley and Hall, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. One five nil. Holland, five one. Five nil, yeah, isn't it? Was it five nil? I, think, I feel well, a bit what... pissy about the whole easy thing because if you look at Sweden's situation, they haven't qualified for the Euros, and they've just played a couple of pointless friendlies. The second of which was tonight against Albania, and I think Isaac's played both of those games, both the full games, and that just mm. terrifies me. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Thomason is their manager now, and he's playing him as a number ten, playing him behind the yeah. the main yeah. striker, um, which is now, a position he hasn't really played. Yeah, and just to finish that roundup, Miguel Almiron's game was uh, called off uh, for like uh, terror attacks in Moscow mm. or whatever. Uh, so they have no other matches scheduled during the break, so he should be coming home uh, pretty soon and, and, and healthy. Now, uh, let me welcome, uh, you know, the fan. She was uh, waiting in line, the first one in line, and that's uh, Barbara Faye. Barbara, welcome to the show for the first time. I appreciate you being on the show. Pleasure. How are you doing? I'm good. Good, good, good. Nice to have you. Nice to have you here. Um, well, no what? Uh, let me... We can talk. We can talk about. I mean, what, what do you think about this international break and and uh, you know the players? Are the, I mean, like uh, somebody was mentioning that. Well, uh, uh, Jamie was mentioning about Isak, and uh, also you got uh, Bruno Guimaraes talking about his future, and you know people not liking what he's saying because people want to say I'm going to stay at Newcastle for the next thirty years. Well, he's not going to say that. Um, the answer is straightforward. You know. He didn't really say what he was going to say. In Right. It was, yeah. He wasn't really given any weird answer, was he? No, no. But he, he, it is a little surprising when players talk about their future, though, all the time, you know, and it's not the first time that he's been asked and he's, he's answered. I mean, with this with these things, it's kind of hard because what is he supposed to do? I mean, next question, that that's probably going to raise more more eyebrows if, if he skips the question, yeah. uh, to be <laughs> fair. So... Like he, was, he didn't want to upset the, the fans, obviously. Yeah. Um, but the media, uh, Barbara, the media pushed for these as well. The media pushed for these right. answers. Yeah. Uh, Barbara, what what would you like to talk about? I mean, you know, what would you like to say? What What is what is on your mind when it comes to Newcastle United? Uh, I've been Saturday against West Ham. It's, it's going to be a very important game. We're going to have to win this one to stay in the race for a, a European spot. And I think we, we should be they're beating them, you know, because um, we have beaten them before this season, I think, didn't we? Right. We drew. Well, no, we, we, drew. we, we, two we all, drew. Yeah. We drew. We could have beat we them. Isaac twice. Yeah, Isaac yeah. at the post, didn't he? Two one. Mm. Yeah, and then they scored the title. They were at home. Uh, 
every game from now on is going to be a six pointer. Yeah. And the the further you go, assuming we'll win a couple of them, the next mm. one's going to be even more of a six pointer. It's going to be a, more a nine a pointer. pointer. I'm I'm uh, I'm not. I'm not someone who normally puts like emphasis on a week to make it like bigger than what it actually is. But I think mm-hmm. if we're going to get Europe, the next seven days from Saturday with two home games and an away games, absolutely huge. If we take mm-hmm. if we take two points or three points, worse well, it's not worst case, but almost worst case. Not only is it going to be a toxic place to be, but I just think that's got to be looking that's for it. at least at least seven points from nine, at least seven yeah. points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, three fixes. That's a tall uh, and, and then the mm-hmm. sorry, go on there, Jimmy. This sets a tone from those last ten games. I'm not exaggerating here. I think from those last ten games, we need to be looking at kind of about twenty-five points because it's it's a pretty steady running. And if you look at the season as a whole, and we can play well in this running, get on a bit of a run. If you, we end up six or seven for the start of the season, if you just said finish six, a couple of quarter finals, I think everyone would have taken that. Happy days. But, but if we keep having these kind of disappointing games like we've had in recent months, then I, I think it's just going to go downhill. And uh, in this game against the near rival, it is it's a six pointer, isn't it? I think we'll be within range it's of them. It's a massive game, yeah. I hope by the time we go to Burnley in May, it's not a six point. I hope we haven't fallen that far. <laughs> I think we'll be all right. I don't think we're going to go that far down. <laughs> we haven't got a point deduction looming, have we? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Well, no, no, I, I, I think that the, the point is if, if let's say, we'll get seven points or nine points out the next three games, that then makes mm. the next one even, even more important because we'll have then closed the gap, hopefully. And um, then if you lose a one, then you're going to get leapfrogged. So it, it's just going to build up and build up and build up. But fortunately, as I've been saying for a while now, at least we've got a, a relatively easy running. Mm. Some, by the way, somebody please got, they got, to, mo- they got to mute their phone. Because it's driving me <laughs> nuts. It's driving yeah. me nuts. I don't know who who it is, but uh, I mean, I mean, it's, it's what, what we're doing right now. It's a, it's an interesting thing. We got ten games left, and that's uh, it's basically all or nothing, in my opinion. I mean, I, I, listen, we were talking about European football, and I know that we essentially the eighth spot could be the one that takes you to Europe, but I just don't see it. I don't, I don't see our form and our uh, we're very inconsistent and. I just don't know. I have I have a lot of doubts whether we're going to make it to Europe. And actually, I'll tell you this: I'll shave my head on live show on the live show if we make it to Europe because I, I can't, I wow. can't, uh, I just don't well, know. I, I don't see it because every can we time get Derek, every week, to see, Derek to shave his as well. Is that any Europe? Oh, it's it's already it, De- Derek has got eighty percent going. I ain't got much to shave. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hang on. We need Go to clarify on. this. You mean any Europe? Yeah. So just, we'll just, just Newcastle wow. to finish in the top eight. Wow. That's well, thing, that's what I, that's what we say. Well, it's no big deal. We, I mean, we said, we said, well, I mean, top, top five, we're going to be fifth, sixth. No big deal. But look at it now. Mm. We kept, we kept regressing our, our, our goal every, you know, every time things got worse, we said, well, now we're seventh. Well, now it's eighth. Well, I mean, uh-huh. which is crazy to me that nearly half of the teams can make it to Europe in the Premier League. And, uh, and although I have a lot of trust in the team, I don't have a lot of trust in the team. So at the same time, because when we say we got to be, we're going to beat Luton, we're going to clearly beat Bournemouth. We're going to, you know, we're going to beat all these teams. We don't. So we're you know, it, it's from, uh, from this we haven't done that from now. Yes. We haven't won back to back games yeah. in the league since Sheffield yeah. United and Burnley. That yeah, like mad, isn't it? Or something. Is that right? That's a, that's a lot. That's that sounds lot. about right. Because we were winning just home games, weren't we, at the start? We were, we were losing or drawing every away game for a yeah. long time. So, yeah, I guess it would make sense. I'm telling you, I don't think it's going to be as easy as we think. Because now Wolves are in the race uh, to make it. I mean, why, why, why would we say that Wolves is not thinking about Conference League? I mean, what, what's going to stop yeah, them? Us? I mean, we, One we, point I mean, behind we, us, aren't they? We are good, but to be honest with you, I just don't know that we can make a push like that and uh, even though we have a uh, uh, an easier sort of schedule left 
Um, yeah, but, yeah. Belling, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's just uh, it. Like I said, we did we did the predictions before, and we said that we were going to win. Yeah, don't underestimate anybody because we, un, you know, we underestimated uh, not as yeah. far as coming to we know, did. James Park, and they, mm. they walked us off the pitch. Chris Wood scored a hat trick. Mm. <laughs> yeah. um, right. in, in about in about four weeks, we've got Sheffield United at home, and I can tell you now, I'm going to underestimate them. I'm just I'm I'm going to go record here is saying. Sheffield United are a bit shite and we should beat them. They're not very good, but I will say <laughs> that they're um, slightly better away from home, I think, than they are at home. So that's the one caveat there. They don't get beaten 8-0 away from home. But they're probably looking at our goals conceded record thinking, oh, that, I like the sound of that. <laughs> We're looking at theirs thinking exactly the same thing. Could be a 6 or thriller. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is right. Uh, well, Barbara, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I appreciate you. You're a great, great fan. So thank you so much for your support. You're a member as well. So and you did it quickly. I mean, you know, just nothing but thankful and, and gratefulness from 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 this end. Thank, thank you, thank you, you so much, Barbara. Barbara. You take care That's of yourself awesome. now. See you. We'll see. see you All right, soon. we'll see Barbara. Thank you. Amazing, amazing fan. Uh, part of the show now. Um, all right. So you know, the international we we go we've gone to um to to Dubai. I mean, what essentially what are we doing there? I mean, are we um, what is going on? So, a lot, not a lot of the, the some the international players, the sort of essentially the best players, are um uh, are with their with their national team. So now in Dubai, what 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 is the team doing? What should we focus on? What is the purpose of this? Is it to get away, go to the beach? But well, we're still gonna have to come back to 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 cloudy Newcastle at the end of the day. We're still, so uh, is it is it worth it? Yeah, I think so. so. Sorry, Derek. Um, I was just going to say, um, when we went to Saudi Arabia a couple of years ago, we suddenly had a massive upturn in form. Or was it 18 months ago? Um, and yeah, so I think the warm weather training does have its benefits. Although there's probably only about eight players out there. So I'm not sure if it's, uh, you know, there's a load on the treatment table and a load on international duties. So, yeah. I think that's that, cool. I kind of say he'll put the comment in before and say, we'll, pro we'll probably come back with a sunstroke injury. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah if you have a think here, though, if we look over there, I saw some footage earlier, earlier in the week of Nick Pope doing some pretty heavy duty training. Hello. And if Hello. Nick Pope's out there and getting involved, Kieran Tripp, yes, coming back off an injury, warm weather training would be good there. Tino Livermento's coming back off an injury. Jamal Lascelles has got to come in for the uh, the person who was impersonating Sven Botman for the last few months. And so we've got we've got that new back four kind of bed in. So if they can use this break, that, that should be what they do. Sort the defence out. I'm not saying that Pope's going to be available to come back in goal, but I, I guess he's not far away, no, maybe. A few weeks. And, but, and, uh, is it end of April he's, he's due to be fit fit for? Yeah. Even okay. if you're training with Carrius and getting the back four up the scratch with um with the changes that's gone on there, then that's that's what we need to do every bloody training session, whether it's in, you know, Dubai and Newcastle. Yeah, should we just wait till next season for Pope? Do you think? Because I, I think is, yeah, we've had we've rushed players back and we've had a few uh, reactions we paid to for that. It. Yeah, we paid yeah. for it. Yeah, so maybe I'd, with him, just wait. I'd I'd be curious to see whether a goalkeeper's on Eddie Owl's list for the summer. I I, I just don't. I know he rates Pope, and I know we all do because he's a really good shot stopper. But I just yeah. don't see how how the way, the way he likes to play football, how a goalkeeper who is, and I really like Nick Pope, who is probably one of the worst footballers with the ball at his feet I've probably ever seen in my life. Like he looks wow. like it's foreign to him when he's got the ball at his feet. Yeah. I've, I've never known a I've never known a footballer like him personally. He looks really really uncomfortable. Did you never watch Emmanuel Riviere? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, but I, I just think to get that ball playing goalkeeper, I just think that would suit. I was, and I know you sometimes have to sacrifice shot stopping, and that's where it's like do you go the old school opinion of a, a goalkeeper should keep the ball out of the net as priority. Yes, he probably should, but the way we like to play it about and keep possession, I just I, I don't know whether the goalkeepers that we have really fit into that model. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and, and, and old man says that the Bravka is the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. So, I mean, it, it, it's not the best was... in the Premier League, but he's as good as Pope, in my opinion. Well, 
I mean, I, I, listen, I don't think Pope, is, I mean, uh, Dubrovka has done anything to, I guess, be criticized over, to be honest. But I don't think the Pope has done anything to not be the starter. He got hurt playing for the team. So I think, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not, essentially, he, did, he didn't mean to get hurt. So, you know, it's, it's, um, oh, I'm frozen. Damn it. You are. You guys you tell are. me, man. You got your finger in your nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I thought you were just staring at someone. I'm, 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 a good, I'm, I'm a good, uh, what, what is that? What is, what are those guys called whenever, well, now I'm a ghost because you don't see nothing. But, uh, what are those guys called when they can't move, they don't move their lips and they talk? A ventriloquist. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there you go. But, uh, go on and keep, well, keep, keep talking. Interesting question here from Philip about, uh, May United might be banned uh, from Europe because Arena has had two different clubs. Um, has anyone heard that? Or was that no, no, not heard that. Wishful thinking, maybe. Uh, and, and, the answer is if anything bad can happen to Manchester United, <laughs> I want it to happen and I want it to happen quickly. I'm with you on that one, sir. I am with you on that one, sir. Get Southgate for yeah. manager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Banting Europe and Southgate as manager. Lovely stuff. Uh, uh, would no, we that, take that would be wonderful. Million for Isaac. Oh, that's a good Martin. question. Um, what do, what do no, you guys I, I think? probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't because I think it's so difficult to find pr um, well, no, prime strikers. I have. Oh, I can you find them. Can you, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I think What's it's so name? difficult to find think. prime strikers in mm. in world football now, isn't it? Because you look at Arsenal, they're scrambling around with Jesus, who's not bad, and um, one or two others. But yeah, I think oh, it'd have to be a bit more, maybe. What's happened here? Yeah. Hundred yeah. million. He's, I think. I think the injury prone target, the age he is, and how long he's been at the clubs, maybe a little bit harsh. He's still quite earlier in his career to be twenty four, isn't he? Yeah, I think. If in two years' time we find him that he's still missing, like, say, 10 to 15 matches in a season or 10 matches a season because of injuries, then I think that's when you maybe are tempted to get someone who's just not of that profile when it comes to his medical record. But I think I think that's maybe a bit harsh. Yeah. I think we, you'd rather put the faith in the brilliant player we've seen at easy we B than, than cash in now. And plus, it costs a lot of money in the first place. So yeah. big fee for him wouldn't bring that much in terms of PSR breathing room. Was he 60 million, 65 million? He was about 63 or something, wasn't yeah, he? About yeah. yeah. But I think, yeah, you're right. He's um and he's also got such a high ceiling. He could he, you know, I think he just needs someone else who can rotate with him who's not Callum Wilson. Yeah. Do we not him. have uh like a, a special clause for Premier League teams for Isaac? Like we like people say that we do for Bruno. Which I don't know if it's true, by the way, but I mean that well, would be interesting. I don't interesting. think he's asked for a close. Don't think so. Certainly hasn't been publicised, to my knowledge. No. Right. Yeah. Um. What? What did uh, this guy? What? What? Somebody making trouble in the chat. Uh. But anyway, so you know, it, it, it's interesting to see. I mean, I don't know. Uh, well, actually, let me ask. Let me ask Jamie. Let me ask Matt. You know, because you guys. Uh, obviously, haven't heard from you lately, and uh, I would like to know your opinion on: Do we need to sell somebody? Do you think? What do you think Newcastle United needs to do? Uh, and by the way, tomorrow we're going to have a transfer show, so uh, we're going to get into deeper into this into this discussion. But what do you think? Do you really think that we need to sell somebody, or can we actually get any big names without really selling these big stars? Any um, buddy? I don't think anybody knows really that's the trouble. Well, let me I'll, ask. Yeah. Well, let me just let me, I didn't ask you, old man. <laughs> I asked Jamie from the mag and Matt from black and white. I didn't ask the old decrepit dude that, you know, that's that bought all these, not, all this equipment you bought and you're still background. looking like you're using that 320 camera. I was just, I was just, I was just going to ask Derek what, what's up to your camera because I've, 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 I've flicked on previously. It looks like you're like HD company. Now it looks like yeah. you're a potato. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got a bag on as well. That's yeah. the technical whiz kid. He was doing it. I gave him my remote. Man, I, I I help him out, and then he destroys it. He he destroys it all by the time we got to go do the show. So I, you know, I'm always I'm giving like up. Man, one of the videos we see on Facebook, doesn't it? One hour decoys was talking to this man online. <laughs> God, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, but yeah, go on, man. I mean, what what do you think? 
to be honest, I would, I would, I would say the same as what Derek just said in terms of we, do, we, we don't know. None of us know exactly what that budget with the new revenue streams that we've generated in the past year, what, what that's going to be looking like going into the summer. I, I, you would assume that there still isn't much to spend because we are staying as strict as possible with everything that's gone wrong for the clubs. We are we are doing things by the book, literally. Uh, you know, it, it, a lot of people obsess over like Bruno at the moment because he's damned if he doesn't. He, he's damned if he doesn't with his interviews. Like he, he's very honest about how the season's gone. All he said was, "I'm disappointed." You know, we we qualified for Europe faster than expected, but then suddenly people are saying, "Does that mean he's gone?" He's an absolute star, but if you're talking about a hundred million in a one, which I don't think many clubs would be willing to pay, there's only certain clubs would pay it all in one go. Mm. Yeah. As far as I understand, that means that Newcastle could spend an absolute bomb in one window, which is but then you lose one of your star men. And I think there's a lot of emotional attachment to Bruno because he's one of them very unique players who understands mm. the city and the fans. And every single time he wins a throw and he celebrates like he's just scored a goal. Right. And it, that makes it a bit harder. But do we have to sell one? It depends. I'm, I'm not in a rush. And I, I know some fans are. And that was very much split opinion. I'm not in a rush to get to... I know this is a, a, a long project. But if our owners are in a rush, I think they're not going to be left for much choice because as far as we all understand, FFP means that we are so restricted because of our revenue right. streams how, as they are now. So for me, no, I would like to see all of them stay, but it just depends. It depends how patient our owners are. And I, I wonder that every day. <laughs> I wonder whether our owners actually believe that this FFP thing was actually real coming in because the Saudis don't seem the sort of people to me who... When they want to spend money and buy glamorous things, I don't think they like being told no, you can't. Yeah, yeah. and it, it scares me. One day, good. one day, they could just turn around and go, "Do you know no, what? Got, I'm sick got, of this I've FFP." Got, I've got a comment of the night coming up, guys. Just wait for this. Here we go. Into a big club. Who's, oh, who, look at this, Trevor Griggs. Is that brutal. the Trevor guy? Like a, well, you know, it, well, Ian, you know what to do, man. I mean, it's just, what. Dude, you haven't wanted to uh, come on, man. Just getting <laughs> getting into an argument with the Spurs. Man. <laughs> Still living come on, man. Spurs, listen, I keep saying this, and I'm very obje objective when it comes to this. Spurs fans and Newcastle fans and Aston Villa fans shouldn't be bantering each other because we we haven't been shy. We've been we've been shy for a while, man. So you know, just stop doing that. And if Tottenham didn't have weren't milking off Arsenal's titty, the whole history. They would be non-existent. So go on, mate. Go on. Um, but uh, Jamie, man, you know what do you think, brother? I know you've been writing a lot of articles, man. But uh, yeah. you know, what, what, so what do you think about this situation? The, that, that's very true. There's this whole thing of how much extra income are we going to get anyway from Adidas and sponsors if they can pull out a sponsor for the training kit and stuff like that. Plus, then you've got another undercurrent of. Somebody mentioned they're selling long staff to 15 million, selling armor on something that's been raised a few times. If you sold a couple of peripheral guys like that, although they do play every week, but you guys know what I mean, could you then still have a very promising transfer window where you could revamp that whole team? But I think I think the same. I think Bruno. It seems like there's a bit of noise there. If you look, we've probably got three saleable assets. Isaac, we've just covered for PSR, would not bring a huge amount in, and it would leave us woefully short of a striker. Botman, who I wouldn't like to see sold. I think he's a great player with a lot of time in front of him, but he's going to be injured all summer anyway, which leaves Bruno. And brutally, if we could start with, well, we couldn't start, but pretty soon have a midfield of Tenali, Willick and Joe Linton you know you could play that midfield without Bruno and then have that 100 million to, to plunge into the squad that would maybe get you five players or something five players plus whatever you get from all the extra sponsorship and um, so I'm veering towards the Bruno seal happening but again I, I hope it doesn't it's just everything about him has just got a good vibe him at Newcastle yeah. What do, what do you uh, think of the philosophy that like Villa sold Grealish for a hundred mil, 
and they've built a squad with that money that's got them where they are. Spurs have done the same with the Kane money, and West Ham have done the same with the race money, and that's a that's a a big factor mm-hmm. in them having the squads now that they've got to put them where they are on the table. What do you yeah. lads think about that? I, I I just think like we've we've moved on from losing some of our best players over the last twenty years, but what we've moved on in the past, the difference now is that we've known that no one better is probably coming in. And I'm not saying someone better than Bruno's out there. If we were to sell Bruno now, it's very different to when we got rid of Kabai. And I'm sure you were exactly the same as me. I was absolutely devastated when we got rid of Kabai. He was absolutely class. Mm, right. But but when we lost him, we knew no money was getting pumped in because, because of he who shall not be named. And right now, you, you would like to hope if we were to sell Bruno, it's for the greater good. And... Let's face it, Bruno's not a Newcastle fan. He's probably an adopted Newcastle fan. But if a Real Madrid, a Barcelona, a PSG's come calling, maybe not PSG because I don't think they're, they're they're held in that high as high regard. But he's going to want to move. You only get one career, and Bruno to me is probably a player in the right mould and the right team who could probably go on to contribute to league titles and Champions League semi finals and. It's just awful to see, isn't it? <laughs> You're yeah. like, no, but, no, but, it, but, it, but it, it's true, man. It's it's true. But I would say this though, uh, that if Newcastle at this moment, and I'm not setting, I'm not saying this to try try to throw digs or anything. I think we're on the process, and and we just got to respect the process. Uh, and it, it is what it is. But if if Newcastle seemed maybe this season we were maybe not getting top four, but maybe fighting for it. Maybe fighting with Spurs, fighting with Aston Villa, it kind of doing similar, but maybe not as good as last season. Or you could say, well, we signed somebody uh, that, uh, that that's a name that, that you can say, wow, this this guy is on this this guy's in our squad. You know, we can only get better. Uh, maybe Bruno or any other player could say, you know, there's I can see a, a near future, you know, a good future. And at this point, it it seems like right now we're just hoping to see it's like years down the line you know and, and it, again it's uh nobody said it was gonna it's gonna be quick uh only, obviously sorry i was just gonna say the only thing i find quite fascinating with bruno and i don't i don't know what you would think about this is obviously in his interview earlier in the week he admitted as we all have that we got champions league football faster than expected so bruno comes into the club when we're fighting off relegation it's a really crazy signing at the time when he came in in january so he came in not expecting to be playing Champions League football literally a year and a half mm. later. So it makes you wonder his motive coming in. Yeah, he, he might have expected Newcastle to get in the Champions League, what, four years later? Three right. years, four years? So I don't know whether his ambitions have just changed because he's realised he's actually a baller that he right. maybe didn't realise when, when he was in France that I'm, I didn't realise I was as good as I am. Or maybe we're all looking into his motives a little bit too much and he's actually quite happy. I, I don't know. I just find that... Mm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely uh, I get your point. Now, let me welcome Lewis, Newcastle fan. Lewis, how you doing, mate? I'm fine. How you doing? Doing great, man. Lewis, another member, another. Well, you are a member of the show. You're not right now, but we, you know, it, it's okay. Yeah. You, you've been supporting the channel for a long time. Um, what do you think, man? What What would you like to say? Well, I was saying, like in the chat before, when you when England were playing Brazil, I loved to see what you did on Facebook with Bruno and Gordon. Thank you. <laughs> it, was, it was brilliant. <laughs> Somebody has to have a bad sense of humour as well, so it's good to know that other people do as well. Yeah, because obviously, course, obviously yeah. as a Newcastle fan, it was weird because we wanted Bruno to do well, but we wanted England to do well, exactly. Gordon to do well. It was like, what the hell's going on? Exactly. <laughs> but no, like, but also, you, like, it's just one of those things, like, thank God Bruno didn't get injured. <laughs> That's the main thing after Bellingham's in tackle on Bruno. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Dynamics Detailing, man, for that <laughs> nice comment. That was nice words. You know, uh, I watch most of the main in UFC channels, and I'm not going to lie, but you're climbing into my top, uh, my top spot. It's close between you and TTR. Well, now TTR are miles ahead when it comes to those guys that have a, a really nice channel right there. But, uh, yeah. but don't sleep on. I mean, now we we do a live streaming, of course. Uh, you know, we're niche to that. We do videos, of course, but. Uh, People like uh, Matt from Black and White Banner, you got to tune into them because they they do blogs and they essentially we listen. When you do this YouTube thing, you spend a lot of money. 
Let's be honest. You spend a lot of money that that you don't have sometimes. But yeah. uh, but Matt, he's got to go match to to matches all the time. Away matches that includes, you know, getting all kinds of more expenses than sometimes we get to uh, get to spend on. So you know, in mm-hmm. in, in the beginning, nobody watches you. So you got to keep doing and doing and doing. So I think that that's a a great thing that Matt, and that's why I reached out to him. I didn't know that he knew old man. If I, you know, and so if I, if I knew that, I would, I would have kept Derek away from you, man. I but, barely, uh, to, be, to be totally honest, I barely remember our conversation, Derek, because I got on that bus <laughs> after, after the Milan match. I'd been drinking uh, pints straight after till three in the morning. I barely remember what we were even talking about. Yeah, no, but great, great to have you on, my friend. Um, all right, so yeah, Lewis. I mean, you know, what do you, what do you think about this? Uh, um, Bruno situation and, and maybe selling players, Isak maybe. What What is your perspective on that? It's, uh, obviously, we know as Newcastle fans, obviously we don't ask for the world. That's the thing. We don't ask for the world. All we ask for is a team, that, a team that tries and players that who would know what we mean. Like, we know we can't get the players who like come from the ranks who might be like again an Mbappe who comes from the academy who knows what it means to represent the, the club. But if we can get a player like halfway between that in for the club, who like is in the, like a, a bit like a baby from Newcastle or the northeast area, what means to represent Newcastle, and it just get some players in who can try and get us to that next level again, as we need mm. to push on. Yep. But it's a bit, I'd be sad to see Bruno go, but I think Isaac's had too much, Isaac's injury prone now. Get rid of him and get a new striker in. Hey. Wow, wow. Lewis, very point. tough. Up and down, oh, then, no, then that's that tough. That's a, I didn't know that, Lewis. Team. Man, that's a new Lewis right there. Controversial, I didn't Lewis. know that. The CM Punk, man, punk yeah, that's because crazy, if you think about man. it, Callum, hey, Wilson, Callum Wilson's in injury prone this season. I think it's been injury prone as well. We can't rely on them yeah. both. But, but what, why, why is that? Why is that, Jamie? I mean, what, what, why do you think like somebody like Isaac that, um just wasn't having injury problems and now all of a sudden he comes here and you know he starts getting hurt over and over it's just i think this season it's just been the same injury never getting better the one uh i think that the moment for me that probably newcastle season fell apart was the home game against brucia dortmund in the wet when isaac went down after about 20 minutes and he went off and the team never really recovered and uh, it's not been right since then. Is um, so I think the positive there is that Isaac that we've seen that still banged in kind of fifteen goals has been eighty percent right. or something. And I, I I genuinely believe that this is not a sort of Callum Wilson, Michael Owen style situation where someone is just inherently injury prone. I think it's stuff that's happening over the last couple of years. Circumstances of having to share that burden with Wilson. And I'm sure that will be something done in the striker area this summer, whether it's someone who's going straight in or somebody to to work off the bench. And I, th- I honestly think we'll see a mm. different easing next year. I hope. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, um, or, or, me... or, is it, or is it Eddie Howe's training? Oh, get away. Could be. <laughs> No, ah, look at that. Matt don't like that. But you don't think that con- that contributes, though? Do you don't think that contributes to this whole thing? No. Be honest, man. I don't. Well, I, I, I would need more than that. Like When you say Eddie, I was tra- training, I, I would assume he just puts the players through drills Monday to Friday, as as most coaches do, does he not? I don't, I don't, I don't know what. <coughs> Steve Bruce. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> There's the other end of that where they, where they probably in the pub three days out of, three days out of seven. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Um, let me answer a question real quick that Tristan put up because uh, you know Tristan is a very demanding fan, man. If you don't answer his questions, <laughs> he's like, Chris, you're hiding from me. Um, uh, Chris says, I have a question. Why has no one not seen? Wait, why has no one not seen we are missing an attack center midfielder, attacking center midfielder, uh, in a central mid? Oh man, uh, you're killing me. <laughs> Um. Anybody read this out, please. Before I start, basically, I, I, I do we? Oh, we an attack on midfield like Madison, I think. Well, I, I would say it's not Madison. Midfielder is what he's getting at. 
yeah. think reading that yeah. message should come with a warning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but no, I love Tristan, man. Tristan is that, but yeah, you killed me on that one. Um, I've thought that before, actually. I thought that if we had a mid we don't, score it, 10 or 12 a season, that might be quite a nice. And we thing don't, to have we're very, team. we're very vertical, man. We're, we are non stop going forward, <laughs> running, running, running. Even Dan Burns, mm. somebody's put chip in his head that he can outrun people. So he just goes to the other end of the, the to the other goalkeepers, <laughs> high fives and comes, runs back again because he really doesn't need to do anything else. I know this is harsh <laughs> and I know Matt is, 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 is his, his piss is boiling at the moment. But you know, it, it, I just don't know why he uh, he he goes forward that much, and and we don't have anybody that can just put the ball, put the put their foot on top of the ball and think, turn around, was, see what's happening. I was devastated when we never. I know he spent opinion in the summer, but I think that's because he chose London, which is always gonna it's always gonna make suddenly Newcastle fans say that he's a bad player. I was gutted when we never got James Madison. Gutted. Yeah, I, I think he would have been a I, very I very. I thought they were gonna get him, you know. <clears throat> Because we got the Neto version. I also think it's a bit harsh that Joe Willick hasn't been mentioned here. I, I think, you know, obviously he's missed a lot of this season, but mm. that's the player that drives out of midfield with the ball. Mm -hmm. Doesn't score that many goals, though, does he? He did on loan in that little period, but yeah. mm -hmm. since then he has barely scored good. a goal. I, 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 I think the way Eddie Howe sets up would struggle would struggle to accommodate a central attacking midfielder. I don't know in that system where that player would sit. Mm, um, yeah. he, he would probably have to change the way he sets up. I think the, you mentioned Willock. I, I, I love Willock. But the way he drives the ball normally down the left of that front three and supports the left-hand side, I think to have a player very central, a bit like James Madison. Right. I, I don't I don't see how we currently set up where that would... I, I think he's, he's tried it with Bruno, didn't he? And I don't think Bruno's that athletic enough to be... It's probably sound probably there. harsh. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure you probably know what I mean when I say that. I don't mean he's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. say what you man, say what you yeah. feel, man. Don't be <laughs> thinking, say what your chest. Come on, I, man. I, I don't like to say anything that sounds negative about Bruno. To be honest, he's one yeah. of the players you almost feel uh, like you know him. Yeah, um, Lewis, uh, just to let before we let you go, brothers, uh, Mason asked a question. Are uh, you at Gate, Gateshead game tomorrow? I uh, yes, I am. Why? No, I? no, no. Actually, I made a mistake. I'm not coming to train, but I'll be there on Saturday. No, there we go. Saturday. No, on Saturday, Friday, Friday. I'm getting Damn, confused. You got your schedule messed up, man. You're going <laughs> to show up late. <laughs> the only reason, you only reason your head's messed up is because on sun basically Saturday, I didn't go to sleep until Sunday night at half, like about two o'clock. Well, I went to sleep um, today yeah. at one o'clock in the morning. I've been awake since half ten Saturday morning. Oh, that's nonsense, man. When I when it's four, three in the morning in the UK, I'm still awake and I'm not complaining. Oh, only only reason is why I stayed up was because on Sunday was the Australian Grand Prix. I had, yeah. It was at four o'clock in the morning, UK time. I like me Formula One. It's brutal. All right, well, Lewis, I appreciate you coming on, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, good, good, good talk, brother. Have a good one. As I said, Chris, hey, come on, that can come on. All right, yes, sir. We can always count on you, man. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you. Adios, adios. Yeah, adios. Yeah. Ciao for now, boy. There we it's go. Uh, Lewis, Newcastle fan, right there. Um, no, we we can talk about this FFP uh, deal because another name has come up. Yesterday we were talking about uh, who were we talking about. Uh, Diaz, somebody from it? Benfica, and oh, yeah, yeah Diaz. D-O-F. D -D mm. yeah, yeah, man. What do you think we're talking about? You just said FFP. Oh, I'm sorry, D-O-F. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, but the, but the, the only reason, see, I was gonna get you, but that's a good comeback. But no, because this guy, last name Pinto, uh, Portuguese, former Roma sporting director, and uh, he said, in quote, to me, FFP is not an enemy. No big deal. Uh, he's not afraid of that. He said uh, it's something that influences your work, but it but it's not an obstacle to your work. We need we need to look at it globally to protect our the global business of football. You need rules. You need sustainability. So is he um, is this guy making it making this known? So he so because he because he knows the Newcastle fans are not uh, uh, talking about FFP and they're they're talking about PSR and all this. You know, is he selling himself? Uh, he's He's been at Roma. Uh, I know that DX, you didn't like the thought of 
uh, what's his name? I can forget his name. We were mentioning uh, Diaz, I think it wasn't. It? Uh, yeah, I can't remember his first name. Pedro Diaz. So I mean, yeah. what what is the the general thought on that on the uh, the the director of football? I mean, we talk about it every week almost, but uh, I mean, it's almost we're talking about this guy more than we we talk the, about the players. Which well, he's been worrisome. interviewed, hasn't he, this guy? So, um, but I, the the reason I wasn't totally in favour was just because he has very little experience. He was a TV pundit for ten years, and then he became yes. Benfica uh, director two, about two and a half years ago, I think it was. So, he doesn't have an awful lot in the bank, whereas someone like Mitchell or someone like that would have, you know, several like almost well more than a decade of experience. So I thought he might be a better, a safer bet. But maybe they feel like they've got to go left field, take a punt. This guy's very good at selling players. He gets big fees for people that he um, sells. You know, he can get 100, over 100 million for just, you know, average, not average, no, half decent midfielders. But um, yeah, so maybe that's what they're thinking. Get some big bucks in and then splash the cash. Yeah. Um, anybody else want to give? Uh, uh, I mean, we've got a lot of time left, man. So stay, don't be quiet. And everybody I mean, to be honest, <laughs> God, it's yeah. just a bunch of dudes what work in an office, and it? it's like, I mean, Ooh. you know, hey, say it with your chest, Jamie. Tell tell the old man how. Hey, listen, let's let's bring uh, Huey Gallagher on. Put uh, start drinking in the middle of the pitch, smoke cigarettes. You know, these guys in suits, man. What 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 input can they have on the pitch? Tell them, Jamie. Well, I mean, I mean. I'm sure you need somebody to hold it all together and stuff like that. But um, run the youth program, make sure you got the right scouting network. Yeah, you need somebody at the top. But I mean, is it really going to make that much difference? What you know, where they've come from, what they've done. As long as they fit into the club's ethos, it, you know, could be sure around me. will be for all that care. As long as. Well, that dude, come on. Let's not get carried away here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's a, he's he's definitely not doing great in the loan but department. It's not like exciting, is it? Though you know, in the summer, like um, when you get a new sign and you're refreshing Twitter and stuff like that, there's people go up the ground to see him. Uh, and like they'll be like Newcastle have been pointed such and such as director of football. And you'll be like, oh well, I've never heard of him. You know, <laughs> only I mean, oh. <laughs> when Dan Ashworth was at West Brom and he went to the FA. People would have been like, "Oh, you're just getting the guy from West Brom." If you get the guy from West Brom now, what is he the wrong guy now? You know. <laughs> well, everyone saw Mark Knopfler on uh, the Newcastle thing and thought uh, Mike Charney was back. Didn't they? They're like, "What's he doing here?" <laughs> oh, oh, Charney, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, I mean, what, what do you think, Matt? No, I was just going to say, I, I know what you mean. With, like, like the whole, <laughs> the whole Dan Asworth thing. Like, I don't know about any use, but like, I was, I was over it. Like about an hour after I heard that he was yeah. going. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's got a good reputation, but it's 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 a director of football. Like, there's there's a lot of people out there that can come into the club and, and he's... He I, that. I tell you what, though, some some fans were turning in their season ticket, uh, you know, when, when, <laughs> when they... Yeah, I mean, they were upset, man. Yeah, I tell you what, you couldn't say nothing about Dan Ashworth because they were upset here to my, to, to, to my right, your left. Of the that's, screen, man. He, that surprises he me actually. That does surprise me a bit. I thought I oh. thought you would have been a bit more old school on that opinion of like uh, directors of football. That wasn't exactly no, that's what you would have been like, Derek. Yeah, all I said, uh Matt, was that PIF came in and got him because he was best in class. Mm -hmm. So we were going for the top of the tree. That's kind of proven by the fact that Man United have come in and they want him and they're going to have to pay twenty million pounds to get him. Yeah, that's fair. So, so, so that my my opinion was that anything we get after best in class is not best in class. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, so that, that was that was my only take on the situation. As you say, you know what the DOF actually does, because everybody thinks they go and find these players, but they don't. All they do is a point. A chief scout and a and a recruitment team, and, and and leave them to do their job, and then they, at the end of the day they sign the check. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, but he, yeah. he he's obviously got a, a lot of names in his in his phone book. I guess it all. Um, I guess it, it just it just comes down to that trust as well, doesn't it? Like we we we've done we've done all right so far <laughs> on this mm -hmm. on this on this project that we find ourselves in, and you just. 
I mean, there's a couple of appointments that concerned me initially. Like, I still think Peter Silverstone, behind the scenes, is trying to make some changes to to the fan experience that um, that scare me a little bit from his background at Arsenal. I, I, I'm scared for the hospitality changes. I'm, mm. I'm worried that in... I know this is getting away from the director of football stuff, but just that sort of board level. I'm worried that in six years' time, I won't recognise going to St. James's Park. It absolutely yeah. scares the shit out of me. Yeah. Pardon the French, because I, th- I feel like we gonna, already we already go in there. Are we going to have yeah. the, the beds? But the, the one thing that Silverstone... Park. The one thing the Silverstone beds. does is he's Tell very good at bringing money in. Very, no, very no, good at was, bringing, yeah, yeah, no, bringing no, revenue good. in. Well, he was the brains uh, behind let, the other let, still, wasn't it? Let yeah. me just cut, uh, cut you uh, guys off for one second. I gave I gave away five memberships to, to the folks, and the Queen of Heart, oh. kind enough, gave five more memberships. She wow. is amazing. She is uh, so we got ten more memberships, and I think my wife is going to give away five more memberships. So stay tuned. So Alan D was give, yeah. gifted a membership. Lady Sam from TTR. Sam. Oh, <laughs> that is that is um yeah, that's Sam. Um, she used to be called Fapa Pickle, I think. She, that's Sam from the, the new uh, the new uh, member of PTR. So there we go. Look at your luck. Uh, Key UP as well got gifted a membership as well as JJ. Now on my behalf, uh, who was gifted a membership? Uh, Lars L- Long something. Uh, also Joe Linton. Uh, Foxy. Good job, Foxy. Thank you, man. Uh, South Links Tune and Let Us Be as well. And I think my wife is going to be giving away five memberships as well. So that you know five more coming so interact with the show uh and um so congrats to everybody out there that got got that membership but i mean yeah i, I do agree i mean i think i think a lot gets made of these uh f uh if, if i keep saying ffp man. uh dofs you know they they um i mean they're good ones i, I guess you're you having suppose... a nightmare a nightmare <laughs> what was that What's up? A nightmare at night, reading out the message before with a double negatives and going disappearing off before, and, and now you get your ass <laughs> <in the middle. laughs> If he's got no trousers on, I'm not coming on this show. <laughs> no, no, I got, I got, I got trousers on, man. No, 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 no. We don't do that. The mighty wind stuff. Mighty wind is, by the way, he's already 53 minutes. We got about seven minutes left. He's getting ready to go to the neighbor's house and take care of some business. Uh, it, you know, very intricate business. Um, so the other day I saw him do something crazy to us to a bake a whole baked chicken, man. That's disturbing. Uh, but uh, uh you know, Mighty Win is a, is an odd duck to say the least. Now, let's finish up the show on um, I mean, what else? Is, oh, by the way, I went to mention this. I don't know what you guys think about this, I didn't know about it. Uh, but apparently, Amanda Stavely is facing uh, it has to pay over three million pounds to a Greek shipping uh, tycoon over a high court legal battle. Um, no idea. I just caught me by surprise. It was written by the Daily Mail. Um, so Could be why she's so How the but, other uh, athlete, yeah. She's yeah, in court with Donald Trump, isn't she? She's, she gets sued like um, well, every time the wind changes. <laughs> <laughs> right. And apparently yeah. she's appealing this no, decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The but so, I mean, so, uh, like, I, but Lola's got appealed. appealed. Mm. I don't know if I'm just wondering if that's why she had to sell her shares. Yeah, I don't know. The Rubens to yeah, get to raise his cash right? to pay her whatever she's expecting. I think that would definitely mm. class as a conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah. if, if she is declared bankrupt, she has to step down from the board. Is that right? Mm. Yeah. Somebody, somebody said that uh, she was gonna. How do, how would that make sense though? How would? I mean, you can't have any shit well, down from the board, board but that, but that means, board. but she would still be, she would still be the owner of, uh, or her, her part. I mean, that has nothing to do with, right? I mean, I mean, she, she they would still force be her to sell, but she couldn't be an owner. No. Hmm. What? How do you? What? Well, I mean, if you own something, how do they make you not own it no more? This is only, only well, m- must happen in the UK. Of a club in a way, isn't it? Yeah, it's sort well, of a retrospective uh, failure of the. The fit and proper owners test. Like, see, <laughs> my 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 wife, hey, that's Betsy. my wife gifted oh, five five, uh, five memberships, and one went to the tune review, <laughs> which is great. Oh, wow, amazing. Sam and, and 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 Paul are watching, and of course, diminishing return. Uh, Navjot Brar, Jimmy McKenna, and Rob Max. So, congrats to you guys, and thank you to my beloved wife 
who just gave birth, by the way, and she's doing fine. She did amazing. Uh, you know, that must, that, you know, it just might be a similar feeling when you have to go, when you're constipated or something. It might be similar. Uh, but uh, don't tell her I said this, and I'm sure she's going to come in something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I shouldn't have said I certainly shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah. She was very quick, by the way. She's just going in and bang, bang, no, bang. You, just Chris, like yeah, shell my, and my, my, <laughs> to get muted. Um, but uh, something else, by the way, regarding Newcastle, that uh, Steve Diamond, chief of the um, uh, the, the Newcastle Falcons, is uh, very open to a Saudi Arabian investment as they are going through financial struggles. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure they would be open. I mean, to, to that, but uh, but has, I mean, he, it, it, has he just declared that he's up? Because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to perform this Australia trip, so can I declare myself open to investment? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, everybody, everybody, I'm serious, man. Everybody's just I'm, I'm very no very shit, open. Sherlock. <laughs> I'm just going to go and update my Facebook status. I am open to investment from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I think yeah, he just went out there. Was, there was members of the Newcastle Falcons board were pictured in Saudi Arabia holding up a shirt. So I think there is something afoot there. Mm. And, you know, there's potential that the site they have and the facilities they have is something that could potentially be all brought together. The Newcastle United women's team play at their ground, which is actually a short walk from my house. So, you know, if they want to build anything extra up there, then, then I'm more than happy with that. But I've said a couple of times that if you could get those teams playing in a, a kind of prefab ground that you could big up at 50,000, that could do as a part time home for United if we need extensive work on St. James's Park, if that's going to be the future direction. Yeah. You've definitely yeah. pissed on my bread thinking I might be able to get some Saudi ownership uh, in, involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My house is for sale for only Saudis. But um, uh, just to finish up, to finish the show, the Premier League has listed their nominees to for the Hall of Fame. And um, I believe four former Newcastle players have been uh, nominated. And if I'm not, let me look at the list. Uh, Sol Campbell. Well, I mean, he played seven games, I think, for, for the for <laughs> Newcastle. But... The less that I vote down, the better. Legendary but, everywhere else uh, from Newcastle. I'm sure, I'm sure he was nominated for playing as Spurs and Arsenal, and not so much Newcastle. Uh, Michael Carrick, he which is... My draft team. Team. I, would, I, would love it. I would love it if Son Sol Campbell got the award and the photo they used of him was in his new <laughs> When he was uh, uh, going over weight, yeah. From the 4-1 yeah. against Portsmouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no doubt. Kasapa, no doubt. Um, and Michael Carrick, a Jordy. So congrats oh, to him. It's a tragic uh, story. Know. Should have played for Newcastle. Uh, tragic. He should have played for the tune, but he never, never did. Uh, Andy Cole, ladies and gentlemen, Andy Cole in the list. Yeah. Uh, he? So very much deserving. Uh, Macam, Jermaine Defoe as well. Uh, and uh, who else we got? Michael Owen, former Newcastle player as well. Or whatever that's worth. Uh, Michael Owen on the list. And uh, let's third in. So Yay! get him in, come on, guys, get him in. Definitely the de deserving for less and uh, Andy Cole, and of course Michael Carrick. I don't have a problem with him. I know he played for, for was for, actually for Cole you, but... nominated as well. Yeah, I he, he's he's dead. Dead. yeah, I think I think it was. I was dead. and there was controversy because they felt that Dennis Irwin should have gone in ahead of him. A lot yeah, of people, yeah, and he, right. he got in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and of course uh, Alan Shearer <laughs> already. In the Hall of Fame, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I yeah. think it was the first, first, one yeah. the first ever, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, all right. Well, we had a Kenny, a Kenny show, ladies and gents, and I appreciate you guys coming on. Of course, Matt, uh, Jamie, and you know we, we're gonna make sure you guys get come on the show uh, as often as we can, and and uh, of course, you know, again, one one last time, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy says, let's not forget, Saul was. Also voted Greg's most loyal customer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, but Matt, tell uh, one more shout out to your channel, brother. Yeah, uh, black white banter across all socials. Uh, not so much serious on other socials apart from a weekly blog that I write after matches and black white banter on YouTube. Uh, home and away, generally speaking, home and away, and then just all 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 the other topics in between. All right, there we go. Black and white banter 
all over social media, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. Damn it, he's on ev he's everywhere. On YouTube, of course, you know. So go go and I, find I, I him. I don't have a girlfriend in case it wasn't already obvious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jamie, where can what what where can we find you, man? What what's what's your work? Yeah, at the mag.co.uk. I'll be writing. I'm I tend to be inactive during um international fortnights because I hate them. Um yeah. but I'll be writing up the West Ham match, I'm sure. And and please, please read it because yeah. I do have a wife and I will be spending part of week Easter weekend away from her writing about probably what is going to be a disappointing one nil defeat. Yeah, Whoa! Crazy. No, 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 no! That's crazy, man! I, I was just, believe I was it. just on the mag this morning. Actually, I was reading. The, the, I think what one of has published an article about the Australia ticket sales. I was just just reading that this morning. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he didn't write that one because he didn't know nothing about it. So, um, no, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> brill, brill show. You can find him. What's your Twitter, uh, Jamie? Uh, Mr. Underscore Dolph, D-O-L-A. There we go. And, of course, Black and White Banner everywhere. If you are new to the channel, subscribe, leave the show with a like, and um, you can become a member. Become a member. Enjoy exclusive content, win prizes every month. And, of course, uh, we will see you tomorrow. we got a transfer show. So we're going to be talking about transfers, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I got, got carried away. There. Is he coming back? But um, yeah, transfer show tomorrow. Transfer check. <laughs> yeah, we'll Get see you. Tomorrow. Like, Bye -bye. folks. Get that like, folks.